But the question that we put out this week is around the what if. Shout out to social manager Javion Duncan, who had this idea a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I don't know if that's going to work, man. And then we put it out there and it works. You know, the, the social dude understands the socials. Who would have who would have uh, guessed that? Perhaps not me, the dude that is hosting the show. I mean, I'm an idiot. JV on is smart. Now, the what ifs are what if this thing happened in college football? And I was thinking something more like future casting as opposed to, you know, getting into the DeLorean and setting it to, I don't know, October 20th, 2018 for all of you Purdue fans out there. What if Ohio State had won that game? And I'm still also thinking more to the point of, you know, what if 2023 five-star quarterback Arch Manning commits to Jackson State? Okay, that that is content for me for years. Like I did, that would have made me happy. But that's not what y'all wanted to talk about. And what y'all did want to talk about, I thought was interesting. And to give, well, those questions, I want to invite on producer Cat, aka SEC Catherine. Producer Cat, uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you again for another wonderful introduction. Um, All right. So here's my first one for you. It's from at Profitology. And they said, what if Nick Saban did replace Mac Brown? I love this question. I love this question. Uh, Shout out Profitology, who uh, replied on my Instagram account. You can find me on the socials. You can find number one show, show on the socials, wherever it is that you want to do social, where that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. But I love this because it really does change college football because Nick Saban is that much of force in college football. But this was also a thing that was really on the table for those of y'all that don't know. All right. So coming off the 2012 National Championship at Alabama, this is according to a Texas billionaire and former UT regent named Tom Hicks, who went on Corby Davidson's podcast, Your Turn, Personality, The Cobra on the Ticket. Shout out the Ticket. I love the radio show. Uh, I used to listen to it all the time. I still do on the podcast. Now, the quote that he gave Davidson is another region and I had the conversation with Saban and his agent. And he said, if Saban was a business guy, he'd be what you call a turnaround artist. He's not a long term CEO. Fix it, win and go on. He knows he will never catch Bear Bryant's legacy in Alabama, but he like to create his legacy and that he's won national championships at more schools than anybody else. He's done it at LSU and Alabama, and he knows he can win a national championship at Alabama. This again, according to a former UT regent in Tom Hicks. And I can't say that a lot of that is wrong because up until LSU, Nick Saban is a nomad among nomads. I might add like coaching by its very nature has dudes moving around and taking jobs where they can get jobs. It's not uncommon for a career college football coach to have more than a dozen gigs. Saban had like 10 and 18 years or something up until LSU, right? Had a decent run in Michigan State, but got railroaded by Nebraska, who we'll talk about in a little bit, and was like, man, I want to do that to other people. And then, leading up the story here, but basically Miss Terry got involved and said, we're coming to LSU. And they end up at LSU. They win a 2003 national championship. And he gets lured to Miami, doesn't like coaching in the NFL, sees the open spot at Alabama, ends up at Alabama because Mal Moore is a smart man getting him back to Tuscaloosa. Turns that ship around in short earner. Gets hired in 2007, wins a national championship in 2009. Again, that is where Texas enters the picture. Because what had happened was Marcel Darius took out Colt McCoy's ribs, you know, like he was making Eve uh, out of Adam. Like it was like that. Man just went straight at him. And that loss for Mac Brown in Texas is also a demarcation line. It is halfway through his 16-year stint. And at a time when people are looking at Texas going, I don't know how this is going to be. So remember going into 2010 when this is first like actually thought about, Texas going five and seven under Mac Brown, right? And then in subsequent years, went eight and five in 2011, nine and four in 2012, and of course got beat down by Oklahoma 63 to 21 in 2012. And that was when the regions were like enough, especially as they see Bob Stoops in Oklahoma finished number four in the country in 2012, while Nick Saban and Alabama win the national championship. So the feelers were out there as Jimmy Sexton called up one of these regents, that is the agent for Nick Saban and many other college football coaches and said, Hey, what do you think about Saban coming through? Now think about that. 
Think if Nick Saban becomes the head coach at Texas. We'll, we'll get to Mac Brown here in a second. We know that Texas produces the second or third most number of blue chip recruits in the country year in and year out. We know that Texas gets more than its fair share of blue chip recruits from the state because kids grow up wanting to go and play for the flagship university, even though most of the kids that play there now are black and the history of the University of Texas is not so, shall we say, white. Now, getting into that, where does Nick Saban actually make a mark? LSU. Why does he make a mark at LSU? Because he's able to convince kids that are from Louisiana to stay there and that they can win there. And he's going to get the kind of staff in place that allows for winning national championships, even if it means rotating cast every other year. You bring him to Texas. You turn Texas into power. Let's assume that he wins a, I don't know, 2016 national championship at Texas instead of, say, I don't know, Alabama doing in 2017. Okay. That means that the Big 12's fortunes have also changed because now we're talking about the Big 12 as one in which you can win national championships and probably going to raise the rate of pay for coaching salaries and you're going to make the big 12 a much more marketable product to networks which means that your buyout is going to be more or buyout which means that your tv revenue share is going to be more for instance big 10 pulls in about 50 million dollars a year per school what if that was you know the big 12 between pulls in about 36 million all these things matter when you're talking about going to get nick saban to coach team but mac brown wasn't having it and mac brown squashed it until about 2013 when news came down the pike from Bill Battle, AD at Alabama at the time, that we're going to extend Nick Saban by four years because we're, we're tired of this. We don't, we don't like any of this. We don't like any of this conversation with Texas because we know the only place that's got deeper pockets than us right now is the University of Texas. Now, the other part about that that I find really interesting is Mac Brown probably is still the head coach of Texas if Taysom Hill and the BYU Cougars did not take a blowtorch to Manny Diaz's defense in 2011. I mean, melted it like a slab of butter, put in an oven, set it broil. So much, so bad that the first thing Mac Brown did after that game was fire Manny Diaz. Okay, the same Manny Diaz who I am talking about. I I hope beats Alabama in the Miami versus Alabama game. So what would have happened? Everything would have changed. Like that's what would have happened if Nick Saban had taken the job at Texas. Uh, Produce Cat. What do you think would happen if Nick Saban had taken the job at Texas? I still think Nick Saban would be the best college football coach to ever coach. I don't think it matters where he goes or where he's coaching. He's going to make the team that he's at the best team in the country and win several national championships. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm with that. It's just about where and when. But I guess the other argument is the only places that he have won, that he has won SEC championships, or SEC champion. Well, I took the words out of my mouth. The only places he's won national championships are at SEC schools, particularly in the SEC West. Like, is Nick Saban Nick Saban at Vanderbilt? Maybe. Probably not. Would he be the best college football coach of all time? I don't know is the answer to that because the championships we think of him having all come at Alabama. Interesting note. 